everybody for coming to the ReadyCat Ward meeting on the 15th of July. And just so you're all aware, this meeting is recorded and will be available if you want it. So I think the first item, Leslie, we've got on the agenda. The first item is Les from Weist. Thanks. Hi, Councillor. Hi, all. Uh, thanks for the invite. Um, just a quick update for myself this time. Um, obviously, I think last time we spoke, I mentioned about some extra services that are coming into Street Scene. Uh, they are starting to materialise now. So we've got um, an initiative we've got running currently called uh, Love Your Streets. And that's uh, it's a group of employees or new employees, and it's being managed centrally that uh, if people want to get involved in their local environment and do some clearing up and do some litter picking, um, we'll come along, we'll facilitate things like litter pickers uh, and bags and we'll arrange to pick them up, things like that. Um, if you do want to get involved with that as a local group or a, a local um, residence association, please get in contact with us. If you go through the waste site website, that's um, birminghamcitygov.co forward slash waste look through there you'll find that we've been there in the clean and greener streets um we're more than welcoming anyone wants to come on board it, it has been quite a success dare i say it at the moment uh and we might as well want to be lying in the front garden or the back garden this evening we could be out doing a bit in the street uh, as a group so please if you want to come and join us um your local councillors uh, they're, they're taking lots of initiatives and again, uh, not to put you in the frame, councillor, but uh, you might have had some inf information about that. And if you do get any contacts and any problems, please just come to myself and uh, we'll direct you in the right way where you need to go. Um, what's also coming along, uh, we've got some- Thanks, money uh, Les, can I just, just chip in and just ask you one question on the litter? Because um, I know we've got loads of groups around Sutton. There's over, I think there's 200 streets close to adopted now, aren't there? And every time I go to the supermarket, somebody's out litter picking in a high vis vest, which is brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, I did have one, well, I've had the same query twice. Once was in this ward and once was actually when I went to another event in Sutton Coalfield. It's occasionally people haven't got in contact with you in advance and do the litter pick. We always tell them how to do it the right way the next time. But if there are the odd instances, are you still OK to come and pick those up for example the fairground on the other side of Sutton had just off their own back gone way beyond where they were set up and done a load of clear up locally and hadn't realized they needed to let you know in advance so I did message in and ask if that could get collected yeah more, more, more than happy to do that councillor and anybody that does obviously the more we know in advance mm -hmm. the better we can react uh, mm -hmm. I will give you a couple of negative things that's happened in the past uh, one that a group went out, done an excellent job, litter picked 150 bags, uh, which was really good. The air looked lovely. I thought we did well when we did 50 or 60. Yeah, but unfortunately, they didn't tell us, and some nice person set fire to them during the night. Oh, so yeah. it's all about our communication because we would have picked them up. So what looked at it like a really good day out was spot right at the very end. So um, us being key to know is key to uh, keeping that yeah. type of thing from not happening. Yeah, absolutely. And it's no point doing the work if somebody's going to go and ruin it like that. And Les mm. and Leslie, we've got Richard Parkin, who is acting in this ward as a really good point of contact for litter picking. He's, he's arranging lots of different litter picks with various groups and individuals as well. Richard Parkin. Thank you. To Councillor uh, Richard, does he... Um, does he publish things on Facebook or Twitter or whatever what he does. He does, yes. Let me, I think it's, let me have a look. He's easily found on, Sut I think it's Sutton Coldfield together. Let me have a look for you. Whilst you tell us the next bit, I'll see if I can find the group. I'm writing that down, sorry. Uh, if we get any, any, um, any people or any groups that want to take part, you know, we're more than keen to, uh, to be part of it as well. Um, all we need to know is the contacts. Uh, you can definitely would... find him through Sutton Coalfield Together group if you message them or um, he is on there, Richard Parkin, and I think you'll see him quite obviously who it is. You can yeah, find him with my friends if I not. I made a note. We okay. will be shortly uh, publishing it a lot further. Now we've got a lot more staffing to do the um, the Love Your Streets and etc. Et things that we're doing. 
uh, we're going to start pointing and we're going to start joining into Twitter groups and etc because we're only as good as all working, communicating and being joined up together. So we've got a good person that's a bit more techni technical savvy than what I am that'll be making contact with people like Richard. Uh, what you're doing when you're doing it so we know, so uh, people feel they're being valued, etc. So that will be coming out very shortly. Um, some of the other things we've got um, moving around the wards is we've got some money to come in to do a trial. Now some of our our rise blocks and some of our low rise blocks and some different areas across the city um, don't recycle uh, like the best that we want to. And we want to sort of encourage people um, to, to to recycle. And what we've got is like, a, it's a type of a roadshow. And what we'll come, we'll go to our rise block. Uh, and it's um, we've got bespoke trucks. Um, and what they'll do, they can completely segregate waste. So you put your paper in one part of the truck your plastics in another part, your tins and cans. I think it takes old clothing as well. And then we'll take that away to be recycled properly. Now, obviously, we will publicise, uh, and we're just in the process of doing that again via Twitter, Facebook, etc. And if we're coming to a road near you, um, probably up on Falcon Lodge, some of the blocks up on um, the, the road escapes, maybe down the middle of the lodge. We might be doing some works around there and some out days out but we'll drop, drop a leaf the day before or day previous. I will tell you to come in and please come out and engage with us, come and have a chat. Um, and again, like the group that Richard is uh, really involved with, we want to try and do this uh, where we get groups like that involved as well. So, you know, we might be there, we might pick up bulky waste. We'll ask people if they've got stuff they want to get, get rid of. We'll help them with that, we'll help them recycle. And dare I say, we'll have a good clear up of the area as well. We're all out there. So, you know, we're looking to get a real good joined up approach on what we do uh, and get everybody involved, obviously, that wants to be involved and try and persuade, dare I say, the ones that don't want to be involved to get involved. A lot of involves in that, I'm sorry, but yes, uh, that, that's where we're aiming. It's good. It does seem to be something that, that's resonating with residents. As I said, I see a lot of people out picking them up. So let's hope it's not just the people picking it up, but that deters people from chucking it in the first place mm -hmm. yeah so you know we, we, we are doing a lot of work um again around dumping um we've bought some extra cruising for dumping um probably worse in certain wards to other wards across the city um but we you know we're looking at where we get the regular spots we're looking to identify who they are the love your streets initiative does come with a level of um enforcement but as I probably advised in the last meeting, um, I, uh, the, the waste enforcement in Birmingham Council is increasing and they're giving us some of that resource to deal with some of the fly tipping and dumping across the city. So we're going to be a lot uh, more able to to deal with that um, and to catch the dumpers. And where uh, uh, We have three key points in this ward that, that we, we get the random occasional one, but there's three places where we regularly get them so if we could add those to the watch and service list that would be brilliant Les. So one of them is the end of Lindridge Road. If you're going away from Sutton just before you get to the bottom of the hill literally it's in the last yards of the ward. One yeah, of them is, sorry, it, is it, waiting, that's all right one of them is, the, is at the bottom of Ready Cap Hill opposite the Porsche garage at the entrance to Newhall Valley Park. And then the third one, as you know, is Churchill Road and Falcon Lodge Crescent, which I kind of think of as one area because they yeah. go around in the circle, don't they? If you do one, you do the other. So those, you know, we get the odd occasional bit, but those are the ones where we get repeat offenders and there's a particular problem with it, yeah. especially the Lindridge Road. There's big bulky stuff dumped there. Yeah, and, and what we're doing, actually, we'll, 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 as we speak, we're doing it, we're mapping that out so we yeah. know that you know, in, um, in in your ward or in Falcon Lodge or that area, these are the three key spots um, and we will clear it. We will look for information and where previous we would engage, educate and enforce. We're taking the educate out now because we think people know what they should be doing and we're engaging with people. You know, we're giving them a warning should we say if we catch them in the first instance, but we will enforce. And um, while we're out there, if we see repetitive Dumping at least, we will be fine from there moving forward. 
because we want to name and shame people as well. So we're going to have a um, a bad person board, if that's the term to use, and we'll be again publishing that saying Absolutely. this is the person in your area. This is doing this because um, I couldn't agree more. We need to start binding now. It's enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, but again, enough is enough. We we've, we've said that, and despite our best efforts to uh, help and support people, um, people are dumping still and still fly tipping. And we're taking a more of a hard nosed approach to it, but we're not just going to pick it up and find. We're actually going to name and shame at the same time. So coming to a, an area near you, you might sort of find something on a website or a Twitter account. This person got caught doing this was fine, etc. And it might be your next door neighbour, but let's hope not. Eh? Um, some of the uh, other my next door are... neighbours are really good. They're always getting a tip, a skip for, for the house. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't saying you're next door neighbor, obviously, cancer, but you just don't know what's around. I'm only joking around with you. Because what we have found um, through lots of the exercises we've done, um, despite what people might say, two things we don't personally bring the waste in and drop it for ourselves to pick up. And secondly, people don't travel to bring it in. It's usually the local residents. And I think sometimes by increasing the, um, the thought that you might get caught will make hopefully make people think twice and if we do catch people and the local residents or the local area see it, they would I'd like to think definitely think twice so it's in, engaging in force that's where we're moving but if we got an issue and I've written them three down councillor um, they will be on our list of places to visit in the uh, coming weeks to uh, see if we can get see what we can do to stop it um, also what's coming along is some extra graffiti crews so Petty Bar who services your area, um, they're going to have their own bespoke graffiti crew like we did way back a few years, well, way back years ago. So if we get anything graffiti wise, they can react pretty quick. Um, and again, that's it's it's four crews across the city. We put one in each depot and that's that's not taking away what we've currently got. It's adding to what we've got. Uh, and these are for keeps. So it's not um, a trial. It's not so we can see if it works. These are for keeps and that's the same with the Love Your Streets work and also the dumping crews, they are for keeps. Um, we've got some other things coming online which we're just starting now. One was that recycling uh, initiative, but we've also got some temporary monies to trial something and we're going to make it work because we want to keep the bunny. Um, we're looking at where we've got flats and shops uh, and they mix the two where you got the flats above the shops and we've got places that are not on um, on wheel bins that might be on sacks. We've got some additional monies to get some crews in to deal with them very issues. So bottom of Falcon Lodge there, you got them shops. My mind's eyes not telling me there's flats above, but if the bags are coming out because they've got no storage, obviously, we're going to put a service in to collect them bags so they don't stop on the streets and fester. No, that's, uh, that's et brilliant. Et I know we've been gradually increasing bins and pickups around Falcon Lodge, it needs to be a double approach, doesn't it? Yes, increase the facilities, but then they actually have to be used. There's no point putting big bins in if people dump bags next to them when yeah. there's still space. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it is a small bunch of shops like that. It can also be uh, a big bunch of shops like some of our main roads, like um, Coventry Road, Stratford Road, Soho Hill, places like that. Uh, we know we've got some issues there, uh, and our first step to solve the issues is Let's get the waste off the streets. Let's look where it's coming from, whether it's a business or people living above the flats, uh, sorry, the shops, to put something in place to deal with the waste properly. So again, lots of exciting times coming up. Um, and hopefully, you know, all residents, if, if, you, if you're in the meeting this evening or if you look at the, uh, the, the webcast after, we're more than happy for everybody to come on board because we're all in it to win it, dare I say, someone else's phrase, but, um, that's the term I'm using at the moment. Uh, so thanks for all the opportunity, councillor. Uh, and if anyone's got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer or take them back. No, I just got one question that isn't on that topic. So thanks for all of that, Les. It's really, really helpful. Um, uh, I heard from you and councillor Mackey today that there are some COVID issues at the depot, which means that some 
pickups are being missed this week. I just <clears> want to understand if that's likely to impact us and also if residents are impacted, how quickly they can expect that to be made up for them. Yeah, apologies for that, Councillor. I should have updated at the start of the meeting on that. Um, currently, Petty Bar Depot is it's probably our worst hit depot. We're getting it at, at every depot we've got. Um, Petty Bar are being hit to a very large degree with COVID. Uh, and it's not we've actually got the virus, it's we've been in contact. So we've got quite a young workforce at Petty Bar uh, and it's coming from the schools. So the children are stopping in school because uh, they haven't closed them and they, there's been contacts made, etc. Uh, that has an in, had an impact on our service, um, especially at Petty Bar, and we've dropped a number of rounds this week. Um, we went to the other depots to try and get some out through the week, but they're all experiencing similar, but not to the degree of Petty Bar. So we have taken the step of, um, we're going to be out on Saturday uh, with a plan to clear everything up. So if you haven't got your if you haven't had a collection and your bin's out, please don't take it in because we will be using crews from other depots, from different areas, etc. Um, they will come and pick up. Now, if you're an assisted collection, they will know that you're assisted collection, so don't worry, we will get to you. Um, but we'll be doing our level best to clear on over the weekend. But if it does run into Monday, uh, we'll pick up on Monday, obviously, what we're missing then on the Monday collections. Thanks ever so much, Les. Appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Very welcome to stay and join us. But if you want to go get your tea or something or get home, I completely understand. Yeah, it's not tea. I've got a lot of work to do this week. We're really against it slightly. Yeah, so go uh, catch up. And thank I'll you very much for your invite. time. Please invite me again. I'm more than happy to attend. Thanks, Les. That's brilliant. Okay. Bye now. Cancer. Thanks. Goodbye, all. Take care. Bye. Right, over to you, Leslie. Uh, it's highways next on the agenda, Councillor Devar. It's Ian Aitken. Hi, Ian, and welcome. I'll let you kick off rather than interrupt you. Okie dokie, thank you. Hopefully, I've sorted my computer out. You can see me. You look um, far more comfortable than me, out there. Yeah, well, I'm I'm currently stuck in the lounge because my one daughter's in the in the kitchen. My wife's cooking. <laughs> the other one's in the bath upstairs, so I'm trying to hide away from them. So, uh, oh, I well, we, yeah, well, I've got the do not enter under any circumstances on the door, and as you can see, the door's <laughs> already open. So, yeah, they've had the warning. I've, I've seen some more pop in. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you a quick update of, of what we've been doing in the ward. Um, as you know, the last few years we've had £10,000 allocated per member uh, for ward minor transport measures, um, and that doesn't go very far. If you think uh, a zebra crossing is probably £20,000 plus. Pelican Crossing, Puffing Crossing, you're probably nearing £100,000 now. When you when we've only got £10,000 per ward, we do have to be careful and you know work out the best way to spend it. A couple of years ago, we uh, we introduced the 20 mile an hour speed limit in Redicap Heath Road by the schools, and the advisory limit outside Hollyfield Primary School. Um, I've since checked the um, collision data, and and so far it's actually looking good. There haven't been any collisions at all since we introduced that lower speed that's limit. That's really, really good to know. And that's really nice to be able to tell the residents as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a positive, uh, positive bit of feedback. So that's good. Um, but those are the, the speed limit and the waiting restrictions in Fairfax Road. They have been sealed, so they are enforceable. And uh, the waiting restrictions can be enforced by the City Council, generally upon request if there's any particular issues we can be contacted and we can ask the enforcement officers to go out and uh, pay some attention to that location. Um, the speed limit obviously is, is down to the police and their resources. So that's more likely to be a community speed watch initiative to start with. Um, last year, we introduced drop curbs around several roads in Falcon Lodge. Um, we let's have a look, Langley Hall Road, Springfield Road and Wyatt Road locations around Newhall Primary School. Um, they're a very simple measure of drop curb, but once you start pushing a pushchair around or you know you find you're in a wheelchair and mobility scooter, they, they do sort of create a bit more freedom um, and you know a lot more accessibility. So around the school now is is pretty accessible. I think we've we've covered most junctions around there now. So that's good. 
And we also managed to uh, complete the, the route along Rectory Road with drop curbs around St Martin's Road, Myring's Drive, Carhampton Road. Um, so yeah, that's another positive and all those are completed from last year. Um, if anybody has any any other locations, we're always welcome, you know, put those on our list and we'll consider them as and when we can. For this year, um, as we've we've discussed fairly recently, and you're one of the first wards to uh, agree to measures for this this year, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we're looking at Lindridge Road around the cemetery. We've got complaints around parking on the grass verges and the footways around there, so we're looking at the potential of a a scheme to prohibit parking on the footways and verges. And I'll be writing to all the residents around there in the next few weeks to, to get their feedback and, and find out whether they'd support it. Um, we can also consider waiting restrictions on the road and it'd be more likely on the cemetery side because I think some of the residents and their visitors do still like to park on the road. Yes. So, so that will be, uh, that'll be going out in the next few weeks, the consultation and I'll feed back to you and we'll, we'll make a decision as to where we go with that one. Um, and as you know, we've also worked with the residents in Hollyfield Drive um, to, to look at the concerns they've got about parking, ma mainly by footballers using Rectory Park. Um, we've put restrictions in there a couple of years ago. They are being enforced, but it's difficult to be there at all times of the day and night and weekends when, when these footballers are turning up. So we're also looking at a sign within Rectory Park. We've agreed it with the Friends of Rectory Park. Just a, a polite request, really, to, to remind footballers and, and other park users to pay a bit of respect to the residents and to park somewhere more appropriate. And just something that you and I are both aware of and the Friends of Rectory Park are, there's two lots of residents, aren't there? There's the ones at that end and there's the ones around by the cricket club. And what we don't want is to improve one end, but just push it. Yeah. Around the park to the other place. Yeah, yeah. And if you know if this if this sign does work and it has a positive effect and it has any knock on effects, we can always consider additional signs if necessary. Um so that's that's pretty much my update. And thank you. I know that you guys have done some nice bits of work agreeing with the um town Sutton Town Rangers, haven't you, where you've said yes, they can go and do clear ups that don't fall within Birmingham budget, but kind of needed permission to go and do it. So there's been a nice bit of co-working going on there as well which has made quite a difference to, to some yeah, tricky areas. It's good to see that on Facebook actually see the positive results that they're, they're creating. Again it's a fairly simple service but mm. it does make a big difference to what people see when they're out of the bat so that's good. So and then my big one that you know I get constantly all the time is the potholes particularly on Lintridge Road and Sir Alfred's Way that are terrible, but the ones on Ready Cap Hill are getting worse quite dramatically, quite rapidly as well. Yeah, well, if there's any specific locations, obviously, those it's open. always it's it's always <laughs> yeah. the same, always Ian. The same. And I know you do it and take it to the contractors, and then yeah. they come and do a patch job. But we need some chunks of road replacing there, doing properly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm, I'm led to believe that they are putting together the next programme. They've just finished the last programme of... But we only got one tiny road. strip of road in the last one and it's not enough because Hollyfield Road is a red route and yeah. Lindridge Road and Sir Alfred's Way are both main through routes for public transport as well so they've got to be sorted out. Yeah well, well we'll certainly back you up with that and we can make noises for you but I believe that consultation or a draft programme will be going out to the councillors or at least a request to ask what roads you'd like considered. So hopefully you'll get an opportunity to... Uh, yeah, but they asked last time and we didn't get anything. So can we rely on you to please lobby for those as well? Because it doesn't just affect this ward because the bus go, it literally is from one side of Sutton to the other. So it does affect yeah, yeah. loads of people. No, that's fair enough. Yeah, no problem at all. So we'll do what we can. Thanks ever so much. OK. Right, unless anybody's got any questions, go get your dinner or scream at the kids or whatever it is that needs doing. Okay. Okay. Both probably if it's like my house. Thank you very much for that. Okay, cheers then. Thanks, Thanks so much. much. Cheerio. Leslie, over to you again. Uh, right, next councillor I is... think everybody should have a photo like Ian's, by the way. <laughs> it's a bit joyful, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, next is Laura Easton from the Commonwealth Games. She's going to do a brief chat about the volunteering for the Games. Hi, Thanks, Laura. Leslie, and welcome, Laura. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for having me um, and for allowing me time to, to come and talk to you about the volunteer programme at the Commonwealth Games. So we are lucky enough to have the, the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham next year. Um, they'll run from the 28th of July to the um, 8th of August. Um, and during that time, we require to recruit over 13,000 volunteers to be a part of our Commonwealth Collective. Volunteers are really the heartbeat of any sort of sports event, um, a sporting and cultural event. Um, they can really make the difference. And we uh, really want local people, so local people from Birmingham and the West Midlands to be part of our volunteer team so that we are representative of the, the, the area that the games are in. And we have local people who are welcoming the world to um, welcoming the world to Birmingham. So applications to volunteer are open now. Um, they launched on the 1st of June and they will be open for the, the next couple of the next few weeks. So we really want to raise awareness of the volunteer opportunities. We really want to encourage as many people to apply as we possibly can, because once the date's closed, we won't be opening it again. So now it really is the time to be a part of, of this um, wonderful event. We've got a number of different volunteer opportunities. Um, they range from being involved into the sport itself, being based at one of our venues, or being based within Birmingham City Centre, um, directing people, um, being in the centre of the, the cultural and live zones um, that will be happening within the city. Um, so people don't have to have particular experience. They don't have to have volunteered before. We can support with the training um, and getting people ready for the role that we're asking them to do. We do ask that people are 18 years of age as of the 1st of January uh, 2022 that they're eligible to volunteer within the UK um, and that they can speak and read English or communicate in British Sign Language. So it doesn't have to be their first language, but as long as they can speak and read and converse in, in English. Um, we look to provide, like I said, all the training for the volunteer positions. We will also um, provide the public transport for them to get from their home location to um, the venue that they're based. We'll provide them with the full uniform that they get to wear and also any um, meals that they'll have while they are on shift as well. Um, so volunteers, um, volunteer applications are open. Something for everyone, be part of one of the biggest sporting events. Well, yes, in the world, but also what's going to come to Birmingham and the West Midlands. Um, it will be something very special. Um, so I can put the link in the chat and um, to be sent out afterwards. It's on our website, birmingham2022.com. Um, and yep, yeah, just for us, it's about having local people involved. Um, so we'd encourage as many people to apply. Thank you. Thanks ever so much. Laura. Have we put this out directly to any of the clubs and schools in the area? So yes, uh -huh. so it will be within um, clubs, schools, maybe not so much in terms of the, um, the age group that we're looking for. So being 18 as of the 1st of, of January, but I know that we are working with a number of the different um, colleges that would, that would have that, that age group. Um, we've been working with um, the community engagement teams within Birmingham City Council as well um, and throughout the, the, the rest of the West Midlands and other members of the local authorities to, to push out between their, their networks and voluntary organisations. But if there are any other community groups, organisations, um, networks that you know of or that you think of, um, please send them my way so we can cross check okay. and the biggies we've got here are the cricket club and the football club but we've also got schools with two six forms and I think the schools would probably respond to a direct approach yeah. I've tried approaching them about the funding that was available in it and they didn't get back to me and I did chase them so if you guys could maybe do yeah. it at least then we have given their children their pupils yeah. every opportunity and it it's not through lack of effort to let them yes, know about or, or even knowing yes yeah, definitely um so maybe if I can follow up with you maybe just on those just yeah, start with course. Leslie just um, to double check. Leslie, I'll give you my phone, phone, phone number. Don't yeah. just give me a call tomorrow or whenever works for you. Brilliant. I really appreciate that. 
Thank you ever so much. Cheers. Oh, can I, sorry, just add that the town council have got a really good community website. It's probably worth reaching out directly to the town council as well. They have a lot of okay. volunteer groups on there. Okay, brilliant. Great okay. advice. Thank you. Thanks. So thank you ever so much. So it just, uh, just John now, if Laura wants to leave or welcome to stay, of course. Just you, John, save the best for last. <laughs> John? Thank you, Councillor. I didn't even know I was going to be on tonight. Um, it's just a quick reminder Never to everybody that you, would we? following on from Laura that we've got the Commonwealth Games funding. So and we I have come to the ward before and spoke about it, but it's just to encourage as many people as we can. It's funding up to a thousand pound, five thousand pound, or up to ten thousand pound. We've got a closing date at the end of November. So it'd be disappointing if the ward didn't actually get any of that funding. In fact, it would be a tragedy. Um, appreciate what you've said, Councillor. I know you've tried some of the schools. Perhaps I will send them a leaflet drop as well. But Sutton Redicap has got £14,300. I'd hate to see it lost. And while we're looking at sort of volunteer groups, if we can find a group, perhaps we could even get some funding that could help them kickstart and get things going. So it's just a general plea tonight, really. Please, so please, please I use, have use me. I have had a ring round. I've tried the big schools, obviously, because I'm being the older ones, the secondary schools, but they haven't got back to me. And I've tried them several times each. I know, I know. Um, but Newhall Hotel are very interested. They okay. are happy to be a sort of centre for doing something, maybe invite the groups in. Uh, James is the manager there. So I'd either give him a call. Or if you can't get hold of him, give me a call and I'll give you his mobile number. But I can't think of anywhere more appropriate as a, as a centre to do stuff, really. It'd be lovely. What a fabulous spot. I don't think there'd be better one in the country, to be perfectly truthful, than doing something from Newport. I will contact them and see what we can do. Oh, Thank all right. You, it also doesn't come with complications of needing permission from the council to use Parkland, does it either? If the hotel are happy to say yes. <laughs> yes, always but a problem. But obviously they're going to need people to want to go there and do bits. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Let's see what we can do. And I know they've actually got a couple of contacts as well. The friends have got contacts with a couple of the schools. So mm -hmm. I will see what I can do from that perspective. It okay, can also sounds... possibly pull stuff across the border of the um, the wards because you've got things like the archery club up at yep. the rugby club and things like that that might want to come in and do. And of course, Newhall itself sits across the boundary, doesn't it? Absolutely. So it'd be perfect. Absolutely yeah. perfect. Right. I will try that. Thank you, Councillor. It's worth a shot. You're welcome. Doing my best. <laughs> Thanks ever so much, John. Right, Leslie, do we have anything else to cover between us? It's a bit disappointing when I got some residents to say they were going to come, but I suppose it is a nice evening in July. It's a nice evening. It's been recorded and it will go out onto YouTube with all the information so they can watch it after. It's not the same when you can't have a cup of tea, is it? <laughs> OK, that's the meeting done then. I'll stop the recording. Right, and thank you ever so much for all your efforts. As